Today we continue to talk about graphs and we continue to talk about the first search algorithm and its applications. Uh, last time we discussed bridges and articulation points and this is something like uh, bottlenecks of the graph. So if you have an articulation point in the graph, it means you have something here and something here and if you want to move from here to here, you kind of need to visit this articulation point. So articulation point is some kind of bottleneck of your graph. And this is how it's going on in, in undirected graphs. But in directed graphs, this, uh, this structure of uh, bottlenecks is a little bit more complicated. And today we kind of discuss how it looks in the directed graph. In directed graphs, again, there is uh, this relation of connectivity is not symmetrical. So uh, this bottlenecks depends on from what point to what point you want to, you want to go. So, it, it's kind of a little bit more complicated, but still it's interesting and today we'll try to build it. Let's go. So we'll, so we'll talk about dominators. What is dominator? Dominator is a special node which kind of, it is on your way to another node. So imagine you have a direct graph. In this direct graph, you have one special node. It's called the source. Of so you have a special node S. That's all. So you have some direct graph and a special node in this graph. And what you want to do is to find the dominators. What is the dominator? Uh, a vertex U is dominator uh, V if it appears on every path from node S to node V. So if you take any path from node S to node V, uh, the node, node U will be on, the, on this path. So the node is a dominator of another node. If you cannot go to this node uh, without visiting this node. So for every path from S to V, uh, uh, the vertex U must be on this path. Then U is the dominator of V. That's all. That's all. So let's draw some graph. Let's draw some graph. So we have no extends here. Uh, and here we have something like one, two, and here we have three. And well, let's see, here we have four and five. Have, have edges like this, and here we have six, or something like that. So let's see. For example, for this node four, uh, which nodes dominate this node four? So if you look on the path from node S to node four, there's just a single path like this path. So this is the only path from node S to node four. And on this path, we have nodes S. Well, let's, let's call it zero. So all the nodes are marked with integers. So on this path from S to four, there are two nodes, zero and two. So both these nodes dominate this node four. Yeah. Uh, that's happening if you have a single path, yeah? But let's take some node which have multiple paths. For example, for example this node five. For well, this node 5, you have two possible paths. You can go like here or you can go like here. But both these paths contain nodes 2 and 0. So again, nodes 2 and 0 dominate, dominate this node 5. Mm -hmm. So for this node 5, there are two dominators. There is 2 and 0. Now, if... if, if now, if... if, if hey, no? Yeah, yeah. I believe you just noticed this node zero actually dominates every node. So node S is a dominator of every node of, of, of a graph because every path from S to V contains no, node S. So S is always the dominator of any node. Uh, let's take some another node. For example, let's take this node six. This node six. This node six is dominated by one and zero. And for example, for example, this node 3 is dominated by, by, by node 0. 
and two dominated by zero, and one dominated by zero, and so on. Yeah. Cool. Uh, the two doesn't dominate five, two dominates five. Ah, two doesn't mean five because we have this. Okay, makes sense. Let's move this. Now two dominates five. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Let's take some seven here. And node seven is dominated only by node zero because you can go this way or you can go that way and so. Every node can, can, can be passed uh, except node zero. So, so, so the only dominator of node seven is node zero. Cool. No, it's fine. <coughs> cool. Now let's uh, try to find some uh, some usual properties of useful properties of these dominators. Uh, first, useful property is the transitivity. So, if u dominates uh, v and v dominates w, then u dominates w. No, obviously, yeah. Because if v dominates w, it means on every path from s to w, there is a node v. Yeah? And u dominates v, uh, then for, for each road from s to v, there must be a node u. So u must be on every path from s to w. So u dominates w. That's transitivity. Uh, second property is a little bit more complicated. Let's take two different uh, dominators of v. So let's take x dominators. The, 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 x and y are both dominators of v. What does it mean? If they both are dominators of the V, uh, then they belong to any path from S to V. So let's draw some path from S to V. On every path, there must be nodes X and Y. So let's put them here. X and Y. Uh, so these two nodes are in some order. So for example, here you, you, you start from S, First you visit x and then you visit y, then you visit v. Let's 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 fix this order like this. So if you first visit x, then visit y. Then I claim that node x is actually a dominator of v, of y. Yes, yes. let's see, x v4, y. Then x is dominator of y. Why is it true? Uh, again, if x is not a dominator of y, then there is some path to node y which goes uh, uh, around node x. So, so you can go to vertex y without visiting node x. So there is some special path from s to y which doesn't visit this node x. But then we can visit node v without visiting x. Yeah? We can use this path and then go here. So we have a path which doesn't contain this node x. So x is not the dominator of v. But we know that x is the dominator of v. So x must be a dominator of y. Nice. What does it mean? What does it mean? If you take uh, some, if you have several dominators of, of a single node, so imagine you have node s, and here you have some dominators of nodes of node v. So, so if these are dominators of node v, then they all dominate each other. So for each for each two dominators, one of them dominates another one. Mm -hmm. So uh, they always appear in this in this sequence. So, so the, the, the order of these dominators here is fixed actually. You first visit this dominator, then you visit this dominator, then this and so on. Because they all dominate each other. <sighs> now Let's see. For each vertex, to uh, what 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 we want to want what we, what we want to build? We want to build some structure of this dominator. So we will want to build some structure which explain how these dominators works in our graph. Yeah? 
So uh, to build this structure, we actually need to know only one dominator of node V. So which of these dominators is the most important dominator of node V? What do you think? You stop, you stop saying everything is clear. So imagine you have these five, uh, four dominators. Which dominator is the most important? Yeah, the, mo the most important dominator is the rightmost dominator, th th this dominator. It's called the immediate dominator of node V. Uh, I'll just say DOM because it's simple. An original, an original paper is called I DOM because it's immediate dominator, but we will not use any other dominators here, starting from this point. So if I say DOM of V, it is immediate dominator of node V. So uh, DOM of V is the rightmost dominator of node V. So it's the closest to node V. Why this dominator is the most important? Because it actually implies all other dominators. How to find all dominators of node V? You start from V, find the immediate dominator of node V, then how to find the next dominator? Next dominator is just immediate dominator of node V. So this dominator, this dominator will be just immediate dominator of immediate dominator of V and so on. So if you want to find all the dominators of node V, you start from node V and each time you just take the immediate dominator of your current node. So you start from here, find the closest dominator to V, find the closest dominator to here, find the closest dominator to here, and then you will find all the dominators of node V. Cool. So that's the plan for today. The plan for today is to build this array of immediate dominators. So for each node, we will find its immediate dominator. That's the whole plan for today's lecture. Nice. Nice. See, everything is clear, if everything is clear. Uh, now, again, if you want to buy, if you want to find something, some, some pointer for each node of your graph, and if you look on this structure, you will have some tree. So, so it's, can you go on a cycle? No, you can't go on a cycle. It's easier because each, each dominator is closer to vertex S as the previous node. So each time you move closer to an node S, so you can't have cycles. No, you, no actually, you can, so if you have cycles, then it means that for each path, you have all this node, uh, it's all, so it's easy to show that, this, that there's no cycle. Uh, what are we talking about? Uh, uh, if you build these dominators, uh, you will have some pointers to some another node. And this structure of pointers will give you some tree-like structure, right? So you can build a tree uh, such that each node is actually, the parent of the node is its dominator. So for example, for this graph, we have this node zero. Now node one has dominator zero. Uh, node two has dominator zero. Node three has dominator two. And node four has dominator two. Now this node six has dominator one. Node 5 has dominator 2. Now this node 7 has dominator 0. So this is the structure of dominators of your graph. So this structure kind of explains what's going on in this uh, dominator situation in your graph. So uh, if you just Just by building this this tree and then just uh, investigating what, what's going on inside this tree, you can get a lot of information about uh, about this bottleneck situation in your graph. For example, here we can see that this two dominates all these nodes. Mm -hmm. It means that if you remove this node two from the graph, all these nodes will be inaccessible from this node zero. Mm -hmm. So this node 2 is kind of important for connectivity of your graph, something like that. So we may say actually that if we remove this node, all this, all this uh, region of the graph will be inaccessible. So this is why we actually need these dominator trees, just to, just to show you some in, interesting points in your graph which are important for the connectivity 
from this node S. Hmm? Kind of like this, okay. Now we're moving to the algorithm. Now we're moving to the algorithm. Uh, the algorithm is pretty complicated. I must prepare you. Uh, so this, uh, the most complicated algorithm by far in this course, I think. Well, maybe, maybe, except, uh, at least in this semester. In this semester, it, it will be the most complicated algorithm. Uh, but we can do it, okay? It will be fine. It's a little bit, it's little bit more complicated than usual, but it will be fine. Let's start from the simple, simple cases. Uh, simple algorithm. So if your graph is acyclic, the algorithm is pretty simple. For example, let's 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 draw some acyclic graph. Let's, for example, remove this. Let's remove this. Ah, it actually it was a cyclic. It was a cyclic. As my. If your graph is a cyclic, it's very easy to build a dominator tree. How to build a dominator tree? You take your graph. Now build the topological order of this graph. Uh, yeah, they are numbered in the topological order. Okay. Now you add the nodes one by one in the topological order and build the the sec well, the dominator tree for this prefix. So you have this topological order of your nodes, and you go from left to right and build as dominator tree for this prefix. Why it is correct? Because uh, if you have some node, then all, the, it, all its dominators must be to the left in the topological order. Yeah? Because you have, this, you have this path, so if you have any node, all its dominators are to the left in the topological order. Yeah? So if you go from left to right and want to build dominator for this node, uh, you only need nodes to the, to, to, to the left in the topological order. So that's what, how we will build the topological the, the, the dominator tree. We'll go from left to right, and each time we'll add one more node to the to, to the dominator tree. So how to find the next node in the dominator tree? So imagine you, you go from left to right, and then take some node V, and want to add this node in your dominator tree. So you take this node V. Node V has some ingoing edges. So for this node V, you have some ingoing edges. So there are some paths to this node V. These paths are must finish in one of these nodes. So if you have some dominator, this dominator must also dominate all these nodes. Mm -hmm. So the dom dominator of node V must also dominate all these three nodes. Right? This is quite simple, yeah? Again, if this node dominates node V, then it belongs to any path from S to V. Mm -hmm. If you take any path from S to one of these nodes U, so if you look on path from S to U, uh, this dominator must belong to this path as well. Yeah? So this dominator must be a dominator of all these three nodes. Now, we just need to find the closest node which dominates all these three nodes. And that's just lowest common ancestor of these nodes in dominator tree. So dominator of V is just LCA of all dominators uh, for all for all edges from U to V. That's all. So again, we take node V, look on all ingoing edges, take these nodes. These nodes are to the left in the topological order, so these nodes are here. So they already belong to, to your dominator tree. Uh -huh. Now, so you know the dominators of these nodes, and you know its position in, in the dominator tree. So you take your node, take the LCA of these dominators, and you find your dominator of your node. Now we just connect it to your dominator, and then again, do, do the same thing for the next node. Yes, and since, since we add those one by one, we can use, for example, binary lifting to find the LCA. Yeah, that's fine. So you, you add, add a node and calculate binary lifting for this node. 
And so, so, so. So each time you have you have your tree, and you calculated the binary listings for all nodes. Now each time you add one more leaf to your node, so you take this dominator, and, take the, and this is node V. So you add one more leaf to your node, so you just calculate the binary listings for this node, and so yeah, yeah. That's simple case. So if your graph is a cyclic, then actually building a building a uh, dominator tree is very simple. The interesting algorithm is when your graph is, is actually half cycles. Uh, then we have a lot of issues. Uh, no, again, why we have issue? Because we can't can't make this topological ordering. So he, if your graph is cyclic, you can just go in this order from left to right, and each time you know what's going on. Yeah, for all the for all the nodes here, you already know is dominator. So it's, if you have cycles, you don't know the order of the building dominator because each node may be a dominator of another node. And you don't know what's going on here. No. Oh. Okay. I'm just making a big pause because I'm I'm kind of afraid of explaining this algorithm. But it, it will be fine, okay? It will be fine. Let's go. Let me let me just some space here. Let's go. The first thing, uh, let's enumerate all the nodes of the tree or of the graph in the by the entry time of the node in the depth search algorithm. So we run depth search algorithm from node S and then enumerate all the nodes by the entry time of this node. Mm -hmm. So if I say that u is less than v, it actually means that node u was visited before node v in this depth search algorithm. So it's at the entry time of uh, u is less than v. Yeah. So we as yeah yes let's assume every node is reachable from S just for simplicity. Okay. So every node is reachable from S. Mm -hmm. Now, I will run depth for search algorithm from node S and enumerate all the nodes by the entry time of this node. Yes, I erased the graph, but I hope, hope, hope it's clear now. Let's draw another graph. Okay, let's draw another graph. So we have a graph like this. Uh, let's have some cycles. Uh, <laughs> yes, I want to have some cycles here. Let's have this cycle and here and something here. That's all. So you start from, from the from this node S. So you start from node S and in the right node by, by the entry time. So you start here. So it's node 1. Then you go here, this node 2. Then you go here, that's a node 3. Then you go back, then you go here, this node is 4. Then I go back, then back, then here, this is 5. And then here, this is 6. Mm -hmm. So this is the numbering we will use in this algorithm. So if we compare two nodes, it is the same as compare the entry time of these nodes. Mm -hmm. Because we will compare the nodes a lot. And every time I see, I, I say that node u is less than v, I will mean that it was entered before node v. Cool. Now, let's see how this structure actually works. So if we have this node v, so we have this node s. We started DFS from this node s. And then at some point, we go here, we go here, we go here, we go here. At some point, we visit node v. Uh, before this node v, we visited some subtrees here. So we go here, visit this subtree, go here, visit this subtree, go here, visit this subtree, then we go to node v, visit each subtree, then we go back, we visit some, some other subtree here, and subtree here, and some subtree here, and so on, and then go back. 
So again, we go from that right. We first with this subtree, then this subtree, then this subtree, then here find node v with this subtree, then go back find this subtree, and go back find this, and so on. So that's the, the, the that's the structure of your death association algorithm, right? So let, let's see which nodes are actually less than v. So if we have node v, which nodes are less than v? So less than v are the nodes which were visited before node v. Which node was visited before node v? Uh, for example, these parents, so all these ancestors of v were visited before node v. So all these nodes are less than v. Also, these subtrees, these subtrees are also less than v. So before node v, visit this part of the graph. This part of the graph is less than v. Mm -hmm. just, that, that, just, just to understand what's going on. So if I say that node u is less than v, it actually means this node u belongs to this part of the graph. It's either the, one of the ancestors of v or v, u belong to some of these subtrees. Mm -hmm. Okay, hope's clear enough. Now let's see. Uh, if I have any edge from this node v, uh, where this edge can go? So if I have any edge from this node v, uh, no, let's remember, if we have a depth search algorithm, we have some special, so we have these edges belong to, to your depth search tree, and then we have some other edges, which just doesn't belong to your depth search tree. So what other edges can be in your graph except these edges of depth search tree? Uh, no, there may be several different types of edges. There may be, for example, edges from node v to one of these ancestors. So we may have edge like this. So some edges going up to the tree. So we may have edge going up to some parent or some ancestor of v. We also may have some edges going to, to the left. So we may have edge to, from v to one of these left subtrees. Yeah. So these two types of edges are perfectly legal. So you may have both these edges in your graph. Look how so, so you first go, go in here, then you go here, and then you see this edge. Mm -hmm. That's perfectly legal. Also, you may have edge from V to, 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 to one of the nodes in this subtree. You may have uh, edge like this. What you may not have, you may not have any edge from V to nodes in these subtrees visited after node V. Huh? Why is this so? Why you can't have edge from V to one of these subtrees? We we'll discuss it when we talk first talk about depth research. No, it's actually because if you have any edge from V to these subtrees, you will not exit this node V until you visit everything you can visit. Yeah? So when you exit this node V, mm -hmm, you kind of try to visit all the edges from node V. So if you have if you have if you have this edge, then when you exit node V, you must look at this edge and you must try to visit this uh, node as well. So the only edges you may have from node V are the edges to one of these uh, nodes which are less than V and also edge inside this subtree. Okay. On the other hand, so let's, let's just uh, let's do it very slowly. It's very slowly. If we have some edge going into this node V, so we have we have some edge from somewhere to this node V. From what part of the graph can we have uh, this edge? No, we may have edge again. We may have edge from in, from this subtree. We have the edge like this, perfectly legal. We may have edge from one of these trees like this. Again, this 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 kind of edge to to the left. Yeah, so this is edge edge up. This is edge to the left. Uh, and also, we may have some edges from one of the ancestors here. So we may have edges from the ancestors of it. 
Well, basically, if we have edge going from one of the nodes less than V, then this edge must be from one of the ancestors. Mm -hmm. We may not have any edge from these subtrees. We may have edges only from the no of nodes greater than V and from the parents or from the ancestors. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's ju just some observations about how this thing is going on. Okay, okay. Just, just to keep you... Just to give you some intuition about what's going on in this situation. So th that's why I will to talk about this cluster. So if I if I just look on the numbers of, of on the on the entry times of these nodes, I kind of I kind of understand what's going on. So if I if I have, for example, if I have node v and I have some edge from node which is less than v. So, so if you have again, so for example, if you have edge from node u to node v. And you know that u is less than v, then u must be an ancestor of v, right? Well, because you only allowed to have uh, ingoing edges from these nodes. So, so if you have this, then u is the ancestor of v. Yeah. So, so to make to 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 make an implication like this, you kind of. You, you kind of need to understand what's going on here, yeah? So this picture is kind of important to understand what's going on and why everything works. Cool. Now, I will prove one theorem, very small theorem, the only one theorem. Everything else will be quite simple, almost. But I need one theorem to make all other proofs simple. Okay, very simple theorem, the single one. There will be no more theorems, okay? I'm kind of limit of the number of mathematics in, in the lecture, so that's, that's the maximal amount of mathematics I'm allowed to have in a single lecture. Okay, single theorem. Uh, imagine you have some path from u to v, and this path is actually from some nodes which is less than u, and less, u is less than v. Then, on this path, there must be some ancestor of v. So on this path, there must be some node P, and P is ancestor of V. So if you move from some node which is less than V to node V, then you almost you always visit at least one ancestor of V. That's all. That's the whole theorem. Let's prove it. Let's just prove it very, very, very simply just look, by looking on this picture. Let's look on this picture. So you have some node u, which is less than v. So this u must belong to this part of the tree, or of, 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 of the graph. Yeah? So this u belong to this part. If u is uh, one of the ancestors, then it's already approved. Yeah? So if u is one of these nodes, we just say p equals to u and we're done, yeah? That's all. Yes, we allow this p to be equal to u. But not v, obviously, because it will be too boring. Okay, now, if u is not an ancestor of v, then it means it belongs to one of these subtrees, for example, here. So here we have no v. Now we need to have a path from here to here. So we start in this subtree. How can we exit this subtree? So to exit this subtree, we must take some edge, and these edges only may go up or left. Yeah? So from this subtree, we may go uh, up to one of the ancestors here. Or we may go left to one of the previous subtrees. Mm -hmm. Because we're only allowed to have uh, edges going down, up, and left. If we go down, we stay in the same subtree. So if we want to exit this subtree, we must go up or left. Yeah? So if we go up, then we visit some ancestor of V. Because all the ancestors of this subtree are the same as ancestors of the V. If we go left, then we have the same situation. Then again, we stay in this subtree, and we want to left this subtree. So we can left this subtree only by using edge up or left. If we go up, again, we find some ancestor of V. If we go left, then we have, again, we have the same situation. We, we, we stay in this subtree until we left this subtree. Uh -huh. So again, we stay in, inside these subtrees 
And we only can left these subtrees if we take one of the edges going to one of the ancestors of, of V. Yeah. So, so to exit this region, we need to take at least one edge going up. And if the edge going up, it, it's going to one of the ancestors of these nodes. And the, the, these ancestors are all the ancestors of V. So we, we will definitely visit at least one ancestor of V. Clear enough. Mm -hmm. you, may do, you may do this proof much more formally, but it's, I, I, I actually believe that visual proof is much more clear than if you, if you try to write the formulas. So you can do the same just by writing a lot of formulas, but I, I, I actually believe that just look at this picture is much more, <laughs> give you much clear understanding about what's going on. Okay. That's all. Now, we will use this theorem a lot. Let, let, let me just let me just write this theorem here because I will use it a lot. Uh, so if I have this p v, so if u is less than v, then p is ancestor of v. Yeah, I'll just keep it here. Nice. We're close, yeah. The next thing, how to prove that some node is immediate dominator of V. So let's have some node V. For, first of all, all the dominators of V must, must be the ancestors of V in this DFS tree. Because if you take any path from S to V, you will have all the dominators of V in this path, yeah? So if you look on this tree of DFS, uh, all the dominators of V must belong to this path. So all the dominators of V must be ancestors of V in this DFS tree. It's quite obvious, yeah? So let's look on all ancestors of V in this DFS tree. So we start from node S. Again, we call DFS from node S. And we build this DFS tree. And these nodes are the ancestors of V. So we have a lot of ancestors in this, in, in, in this DFS tree. Now. Uh, we want to prove that one of the nodes is actually a dominator. So let's prove that this node is dominator of V. It is Im immediate dominator. So it is the lowest possible nodes which dominates node V. How can we prove that some node actually is the lowest possible dominator of V? So we need to prove a lot of things. Yeah? First of all, we need to prove that this node dominates V. And also we need to prove that all nodes below do not dominate this node V. So we need to prove that this is the dominator of V and these three nodes are not the dominators of V. So this is the dominator and these are not dominators. Yeah. Yeah. That's kind of the plan, yeah? So, so if we want to find the closest dominator for, no, for node V, we need to prove that all these nodes are not the dominators of V and this node is a dominator of V, then this node is the immediate dominator of V. That's the plan. Now, how to prove that some node is not a dominator of V? Well, let's again. Okay. So you have this node V, this node S. Here you have some node U, and here you have something like this. So, if you want to prove this U is not a dominator of V, how to prove this? I'm just checking your life. <laughs> there must be some forward edge. Not actually forward edge. There must be some forward path. So there must be some path which goes to node V but doesn't visit this node U. Yeah? There must be not a single edge. There, there may be some something like this. So there must be some path. So if u is not a dominator of v, there must be some path which goes out of this node v, u, like kind of from here to here, and we doesn't visit this node u. Okay. Uh, so the algorithm will be kind of looking for paths like this. So we will try to look to find something like some paths like this, 
and these paths will help us to prove that some nodes are not the dominators. And then we will find all the nodes which are not the dominators, and the first node uh, which we failed will be actually the dominator, and we will prove that it actually dominates. That's the plan. So we'll we'll find the paths like this for all the nodes here. And then for some node, we will not find the path, and this node will be a dominator. That's the whole plan of this algorithm. Cool. Let's go. Now, to find paths like this, we need to build some additional structure, unfortunately. Uh, we need to find something which is called a semi-dominator. Ah, let's go. So vertex u is the semi-dominator of v if uh, there is a path from node u to node v and in this path all the uh, all these middle nodes all here all these nodes in the middle yeah all these nodes. Ah, less, ah, no, greater, 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 greater. Greater than V. No, there's kind of paths like this. So if you look on this U, this D. So if you have a path from U to V, which visit only the nodes which are greater than V. So it's kind of path like this. So it's in this right part of the graph. So if you find the path from u to v like this, then u semi-dominator of v. Clear enough? Let's try some. Let, 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 let's draw some graph again. Let's, let's have some more examples. Let's have some more examples. Let's do it very slowly. For example, again here, zero, one, two, mm. yeah. it's wrong number. Uh, two, three, four. Good enough, good enough, good enough. Yeah, we'll be done with the highest of Not exactly. It's a little bit more complicated, but you're, you're, you're kind of close. You're close, but not exactly. Uh, now, let's look here. Um, for example, uh, for this node 2, we have node 0. Node 0 is the same eliminator of node 2. So because we can use this path, yeah, we have this path from zero to two, and this path only visit nodes which are greater than two. So zero is semi-dominator of two. Uh, zero is also semi-dominator of four because we can use this path, and in this path there are no middle edges or mid middle nodes. So just by definition, all the middle nodes are greater than four. Because empty set is yes, it's, it's easy. So all the nodes here are greater than four. There are no nodes, so it's, so it's true. So zero is actually semi-dominator of four. Mm -hmm. Now, go. So let's see. We actually need to think only about semi dominator. So, so let, let, let's say that u is actually ancestor. So let's use u is ancestor of v because that's, th these are the only important semi dominators we have. You can remove this from definition, but it's it's easier to say it like this. I'll show you just in, in, in a second. I'll show I'll show you just in a second. So uh, now let's look on all semi dominators of v. So you have this node s. So if you have this node u, and u is semi-dominator of v, 
What does it say about dominators? It actually say that all the nodes below this U are not the dominators. So you have some path like here. So if you have path like this, then all the nodes here are not the dominators. So these nodes are not the dominators. Mm -hmm. Now, if you have several possible semi-dominators, again, you have this node V, and you have several semi-dominators. Which of these semi-dominators is the most important one? What do you think? So if you have several semi-dominators, you actually need only one. Which one? Hmm? Anyone? Again, why do we need dominators? These dominators are used to prove that these nodes are not the dominators. This is a semi-dominator. If you have semi-dominator, then all nodes below are not the dominators. Yeah? So, so this dominator proof, uh, give you the proof that these nodes are not dominators. This semi-dominator gives you the proof that all these nodes are not semi-dominators, not, not dominators, and so on. So the topmost semi-dominator, this one, give you more information than all other semi-dominators. So this is actually the most important semi-dominator because these semi-dominators give you the proof uh, that all these nodes here are not the dominators. So, so these semi-dominators give you the maximal possible information. So this, th this is the most important semi-dominator and we will remem remember only, on, 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 only this dominator. So this, this node, We will call S DOM. Uh, will be the minimal uh, semi dominator of uh, V. Mm -hmm. Minimal because because all the nodes on this path are uh, ordered by the entry time. So you, you, if you want to find the topmost node, it, it is not minimal entry time. And this minimum is by, by the entry time. Yeah? So all the nodes in, in any path in your depth of search tree are ordered by the entry time. You first enter this node, you, you, then you f enter this node and so on. So you enter the nodes in this order. So this will be the order which was the entered, entered first yeah? in this depth of search. Uh, so S DOM will be the semi-dominator with minimal number if you order the nodes by the entry time. So it will be the topmost semi-dominator, right? That's all. That's the whole. That's the whole. Mm -hmm. That's all. Now we need to f do. Okay, we need two things. First. We will build semi-dominators. Plan. Uh, first, we'll build semi-dominators. Build as DOM of V. And then we will build uh, dominators using these semi-dominators. That's the plan. Uh, both these steps are kind of scary, but it, it, it will be fine. <laughs> um, let's try to start for, from the second one, actually. Just to, so, just to show that the same names are actually important. Uh, let's start from the, from the first step. So let's do the, this step first. So if you want to if you already know the semi-dominators of all the nodes, how to find the dominator? Uh, 
Uh, uh, first of all, which which node will be a buff actually? So you have these two nodes. One of them is semi-dominator, another is dominator. So let's say one of these nodes is semi-dominator, another node is dominator. Which node is less has less entry time? So which of them is dominator? Which of them is semi-dominator? What do you think? It's actually easy. Yeah. Yes. The if you have some semi-dominator, then all the nodes below are not the dominators. So semi-dominator must be must be less. So, so we have this as DOM of V and this is DOM of V. They may be the same node. For example, here, for example, yeah. Here this S is semi-dominator of V is and S is the is dominator of V. So so these two nodes may be the same nodes, but sometimes they don't. For example, let's build some simple graph. Uh, well, let's say like this, so we have this 0, 1, 2, and 3. And you have something like this. You, have, you also have edge from here to here and edge from here to here. So for example, in this graph, for this three, uh, one is the semi-dominator of, of, of three. Zero is not a semi-dominator. So this zero is not a semi-dominator of three. Yeah? So this one is a, is a semi-dominator of three. And this zero is a dominator of three. Mm -hmm. So they may be the same nodes. The, 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 the same node, they may be different nodes. It's all possible. Ah, good. Let's see. Let's look in this region of the graph. So let's look on all the nodes in this region. So, so again, let's remove this by now. So remember, remember, imagine you know that the, you, you already calculated all the semi-dominators. You, you know the semi-dominator of node V. Let's look on all the nodes in this region. For this region. Let's find all, uh, we already know all, all the semi-dominators. So we know all the semi-dominators semi of all the nodes here. Imagine that all the semi-dominators actually belong to the same range. So, so you have node U here. And the semi-dominator of node U is all, 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 always below this point. So for all nodes belonging to, to this path from S DOM, actually not including S DOM, not including S DOM of V, from, from actually from here. In this region, because S DOM of V actually is above S DOM of V. Yeah. Uh, S DOM of V uh, to V. Yeah, if its semi-dominator is greater or equal than semi-dominator of V. Again, what does it mean? It means that we're kind of stuck inside this segment. So inside this segment, all the semi-dominators of all nodes in this segment belong to, to, to the same segment. Yeah. So if you have these wonderful paths, then all these paths here are, are kind of inside this region. So we have some paths, but they all belong to this region. Yeah. What does it mean? What do you think? So for each node from this segment, uh, you know that the closest or so far, farthest minimal semi-dominator is also inside this region. What does it mean? No, this picture kind of explains what, what's going on. Again, if I look in, 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 in this region and, and for each node in this region, the semi-dominator also belongs to this region. 
then, yes, you're right, then the denominator is actually equal to the semi denominator. Well, let's prove this. It's actually easy to prove. First of all, all the nodes below are not the denominators. Yeah? So it's easy. So all these nodes are not the denominators. Now we just need to prove that this node is a dominator. How to prove this node is a dominator? Imagine this node is not a dominator. Then we have some path from S to V, which doesn't visit this node. So we have some path from node S. Where is this? So we have some path from S to V, which doesn't visit this node. Let's find the first node of this uh, of, of this path, which belong to this green region. So in this region, we have some node U, and this this is the first node on this path, which belongs to this region, actually, including the node V. So, it's, so we have some path from S to V. This path ends in node V. So we will, we will at least visit node V. But we may visit first some node here. So we may, we may have some path from S to something here, then to here, and then to here. Yeah. So U is the first, so leftmost, yeah? leftmost node on this path, which belongs to this path. We can make use of this lemma. It's actually even simpler. It's, it's, it's even more simple, yeah. We can make use of this lemma. I believe we don't need to. Let me think. Yes, we, yes, we, we, we will need this lemma, yeah, you're right. You're right. Uh, now, let's go to the left from this node U and find the closest node which is less than U. Uh, w. This W is less than U. So if this W is less than U, then this W must be the parent of U, the ancestor of U. Yeah? So this W must be somewhere here. Uh, why this is true? Because, again, no, we'll use this lemma. If W is less than U, then on this path from W to U, there must be some ancestor of U. But W is the closest node to the U, which is less than U. So this W must be ancestor of U. Yeah, you're right. We'll use, just use this lemma. That's all. Where's the contradiction? Do you see the contradiction? Yeah. Do you see it? The contradiction is very simple. So all the nodes in this area are greater than U. It means that W is semi-dominator of U. Mm -hmm. So we have some, so in this region, we have some node U, which has some semi-dominator, which is above this point. And this contradicts with this uh, statement. Yeah. So again, 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 what I want to prove? I want to prove that if all dominators, semi-dominators in this region are below this point, then this point is actually a dominator of V. Why it is? Because if it is not a dominator, then we have some path like this. This path must visit at least one node from here, and we will find the closest node here, and this node will be a semi-dominator of this node. Uh -huh. That's all. Mm -hmm. Again, yeah. I want to prove that if all the nodes in this region have a seminator below this point, then this is a dominator. Why it is true? Because all these nodes are not dominators, and this one is the dominator of V. Why it is dominator? If we have some path which avoids this point, like here, 
then it must be it, it, it must enter this region at some point u and the closest node here which is less than u must be its parent but u is the first node from this region so w must be its parent but not from this region so it so it's parent above this position uh -huh. so we have some node u which have a semi denominator above this position so it contradicts this uh, statement yeah cool now second case if we have some node which has denominator less than so so let's take a node u which has minimal uh, Again, let's take some node which belongs to, 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 to the same region. Again, it's, it, it, must, it, it, it includes W. It includes V. Yeah, just, just for simplicity. Or we have empty set. Yeah, to V. Like this. And we take the minim, minimal possible semi denominator. So we take the node with minimal possible semi denominator. So we have highest possible semi denominator from this region. Um, it turns out that the situation is very simple. I just that our semi denominator is the same as the semi denominator of you. Yeah, let me draw this picture again. So we have this node V. We have this node u. Now we have semi denominator of v, and here we have semi denominator of u, and here we have denominator of u. Uh -huh. Didn't plan it well enough. Okay, we have we have one, two, three. Four. We need to fit four nodes here, right? Okay, and I need to fit four nodes here. Uh, 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 and you, right? Right. So this is the semi denominator of V. This is semi denominator of U. And this is the denominator of U. Yeah. Right. I want to prove that this node is actually a denominator of V. And this U is actually not the minimal possible seminator from this region. So from this region, this U has a highest possible, not this, in, from this region, from this region. From this region, this U has a maximal possible semi-dominator. So this, I have a path semi, from semi-dominator to here. And this, uh, this semi-dominator is minimal possible. Nice. So we need to prove that this this node is a media dominator of V. So first of all, let's prove that all the nodes below are not the dominators of V. So how to prove that all the nodes below are not the dominators of V? No, these nodes are obviously not the dominators. Yeah. So these node nodes are not the dominators because we can avoid it because this is the closest. So, so this node is a semi dominator of V. So we have path like this. So these nodes are not the dominators of V. Ah, these nodes are also not dominators of V because they are not dominators of U. So if we can avoid these nodes when we go to node U, we can also avoid them when we go to node V. So, so we, are, we start from node S, we go to node U avoiding these nodes and then go to here. So these nodes are all, all, all also not the dominators of V. Right. Now we just need to prove that this node is actually a dominator of V. Let's prove this. It's actually simple. Again, let's imagine this node is not a dominator of V. Then there must be some path which goes from node S to node V and which doesn't with this 
Dame la intro. Segundo, tenemos una path de nodo node S a nodo V. If this path do not visit this denominator, it also may not visit this u. Mm -hmm. Because if this path contains u, it must contain its denominator. So we have some path which starts from node s and kind of avoids this denominator, and it also must avoid this node u. So it's something like this. Mm -hmm. Why these nodes are cross out? Because uh, these nodes cannot be dominators of V. Because we can avoid these nodes when we visit node U. So for all nodes in this range, uh, these nodes are not the dominators of U. So we can avoid this edge when we go to node U. And now, so, so we, we, we use the same path to node U and then use this part to go here. So we can avoid all these nodes from this region also. Again. We can avoid this a, these, these nodes when we go to node U, so we can avoid them when we go to node V. We just use this path plus this part. Now we just need to prove that this node is actually a dominator. So imagine this node is not a dominator. Then we have some path from S to V, which avoids this dominator. If this path avoids the dominator of U, it also must avoid the U. Because if this path contains u, it must contain its denominator. So we have some path from S to V, which avoids node u. So let's find the first node from this region. It is not u, it's some another node. Here. Again, let's find the leftmost node. Here. Now again. We find the closest node. I am out of letters actually. Let's find node X. So we find the closest node to the left, which is less than W. This node. Well, now again, this X is semi dominator of W. Can you see it? Yeah. Because, again, by the same lemma, X must be a parent of uh, the ancestor of, of W, and this ancestor cannot be below this point because this is the first. We, we, we try to avoid this denominator. Uh, yeah. So all these nodes here are greater than W, so X must be a semi dominator of W. So X is a semi dominator of. W and X is actually less than the dominator of U, so it is uh, less or equal than the same dominator. Yep. And now we have a contradiction because for this node, no, this node U is the node with minimal possible semi dominator, but we have node V which have semi dominator above this point. Yeah. So u is not a minimal has not a minimal semi dominator in this range. Now we have a contradiction. Why x is less than less dominator of u? Because this path cannot contain this dominator. Mm -hmm. And if it can contain this dominator, it also can contain any nodes in this range. Mm -hmm. Again, 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 this path do not contain this dominator. Mm -hmm. If we can avoid this dominator, we can go to node u, because node, this node dominates u. If we can avoid it and go to u, it means this node is not a, not a dominator. Yeah? So if we avoid this dominator, we also must avoid all this region. Because if, if you go from here, go here, then we can visit node u and avoid this dominator. So this is not a dominator. Yeah? So if we have path which avoids dominator, it also must avoid all this region, actually. It might go here and then go straight here. That's all. Hmm? That's the whole proof. That's the whole proof.
Uh, and now we have the algorithm for building the dominators from the semi-dominators. So, so if you know the semi-dominator, then how to find the dominator? You take a node V, uh, look on this part of your tree, so on this path. In this path, you find the node with minimal semi-dominator. If it is greater or equal than semi-dominator of V, then dominator of V equal to semi-dominator of V. If it is, again, if it is less, If it is less than semi-dominator of V, then you just uh, assign the same value as the value of U. Mm -hmm. That's all. Yes, you also need to calculate in, 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 in the correct order. So you need to calculate from top to bottom. So when you calculate this value of V, you also need to waste value of U be calculated before. But you, you, you can just calculate from, from top to bottom. Yeah. So when you calculate this V, U is already calculated, so you can this assignment. Yeah. It's also not how it's actually need to be run, but close enough. Uh, now, uh, to calculate this quickly, to calculate this quickly, you actually need to data structure, which calculates this minimum of semi-dominators in, 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 in a path on a tree. So you need some data structure which finds minimum in a path in a tree. But we know these data structures from the last semester, right? So in the last semester, we discussed a few data structures which help you to find the minimum in the region of the tree. For example, you can use link cut trees. Why not? So you may use link cut trees to calculate these minimums no, you can use segment tree. Segment tree is only for segments. And here you have a tree. So this segment is not, it's not a segment of, of a line. It's a segment of a tree. You have some other things here. So I just draw, draw only one path of the tree, but it's actually a tree. You have some, something here and something here. It's actually a part of the big tree. Yeah? So you can use segment trees. Yeah. So for example, you can use, at least you can use link cut trees. Yeah? Uh, link cut tree is actually a little bit overkill for, for this algorithm. You may, since you have a static data structure, you may use uh, link eval data structure, which we discussed in one of the bonus lectures. Yes, you, 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 for this thing, you, you, can usually, you can also use binary listings, right? Yes, 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 yes. To calculate these things, you also can, you, you also can use binary listings. Since you have static data structure, you don't change this. Yes, you can use binary listings for this. Yes. You will need you will need something something less in, so something more interesting in the first phase, but yeah yeah yeah, yeah right. Here you can you can use binary listings. You're right. Ah, oh, maybe in the second phase you also can use binary listings. Let me think. Maybe maybe, yeah. Maybe, maybe you just you can just use binary listings in both phases. Yeah. Again, here, here you, you need to find minimum in a segment of the tree. Uh, you can use binary listings. You can use link cut trees. You can use link eval data structure. Link eval will g actually give you not logarithm but inverse Ackermann time for, for for all operations. But up to you. Uh, Yes, the link eval data structure is the same as disjoint union, but you actually calculate something on the path. We discussed in one one of the, one of the bonus lectures last last year, right? It's kind of it's a little bit more complicated because you, you when you calculate minimums, you cannot uh, you, you cannot change the order of the links. So when you link one tree to another tree, you can just swap it and link this to here because it will change the minimums. So it's kind of more complicated, but it's possible to make a disjointed union like data structure to calculate minimums in a static data structure. Yeah. Okay, so this is the second phase. Second phase now. So if we know the same dominators, we can build the dominators. Uh, let's calculate time complexity. No, if you do something simple, if you could use binary liftings or something like this, the time complexity will be m log n.
and login. Yeah, we need we need on, only once for each node. Yeah. So complexity of this path or of this phase is actually n log n. Yeah. Complexity of the first phase will be n log n. Spoilers. Ooh. Okay. Now the final part. We need to calculate these semi dominators. Let's go. Let's go calculate semi dominators. Is it clear by now? That's, that, that's very complicated lecture. Okay, I hope you're alive. I will raise it. Okay. Can you show which node the link to? Yep. What? 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 Now, if you want to use link evaluate structure, you need to do it in special order. Yeah. You may think about it. Uh, so link about the structure, you kind of, you, you, it's like link a tree, but you don't make any cuts. You only make links. So you, you can link to trees and you can calculate the minimum from here to the root of the tree. Yeah. So here, what you want to do is when you calculate this value for node V, you know, you want this part to be a part of your root. So, so you want this node be a root of the tree for node V. How can you achieve it? Uh, you kind of do it, uh, you, you make a def search, and when you exit def search, you make a link. So it's at, at, at every point you have your current node. So in your def search, you have your node v. And when you exit def search, everything here is linked, but v is not linked to the parent. And now what you want to do is calculate this dominator when you exit this node. So when you exit the semi-dominator, you find all the nodes for this for, for, for which this node is semi-dominator. And at this point, you calculate dominator for this node. So when you exit this node, you have all these nodes linked. So this value will contain... No, actually not. It actually, you don't want this connection, yeah? You want, the you want to minimum accept this semi-dominator, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So what, what, it's not, not, not like this, you, you, you need, yeah, like that, that situation you want to be in, actually. That situation you want to be, you want to calculate minimum among all nodes except this one. So you, you want to picture something like this. So, so when you exit this semi-dominator, so this X is semi-dominator of V, you take this V and uh, this second, so, so this eval function will give you minimum on this path. And now you exit this node X, you make all these links and exit node X, something like that. You may think about it. That's, that's an interesting exercise about using uh, link evaluated structure for algorithm like this. So you, you just need to do it in special order to make it work. So you want to calculate some minimums in tree. You just need to find the good order of these minimums, so all these requests will be uh, doing in the order when you have this. So, yeah, so when, when you calculate the request, you need your tree look like this. So you just, yeah. okay, you can do it. Final part. Let's calculate semi dominator. It will be a little bit more scary, but Okay, how to find semi-dominator? Let's take node V. Uh, if some node is semi-dominator of V, well, let's say U is semi-dominator of V, then there must be some path from U to V, yeah, such that all nodes here are greater than V. Aha, uh -huh. I have it here. <laughs> I thought I read it. Okay. Uh, okay. So I need I, I have some path from U to V and all the nodes in the middle are greater than V. Let's have two cases. First case. Uh, there is no middle no no nodes in the middle. So, so I have U and then the V. So if I have the edge from U to V, then U is semi-dimeter of V. 
just by, by, by definition. So how to find all the nodes like this? No, it's simple. Let's look on all ingoing edges to node V. Uh, so let's look on all ingoing edges. Uh, these nodes are semi-dominators of V. Let's just count them. So, so let's just include them in this minimum. We need to find the minimal semi-dominator. So we will add these nodes to our minimum. Okay, that's that, 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 that is a simple case. Now the second case. Second case. If I have some nodes in the middle, let's look on the last node in this sequence. We have this node U, then we have some path, then we have some node W, and then node V. Like this. Again, we have two cases. Uh, there is no middle, no, 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 there is no, 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 no verses in the middle, or there are some nodes, no nodes in the middle. If there is if nothing in the middle, then I have to just have edge from u to v. I just iterate for all possible edges. And if I have something in the middle, let's look on the final node here. And let's iterate for all possible final nodes. Again, how to iterate all possible nodes? We can take all the ingoing edges, and here we have this node w. Whew. Okay. Now. Now, what we need to do? We need to find node u, which has a path to node w, such that all the nodes here are greater than v. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, this node u may, 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 may be not the semi-dominator of w. It would be good if this u is semi-dominator of w. Then we just calculate semi-dominator of w and add the semi-dominator of w to node v. Mm -hmm. Cool. But, but okay, okay, so let's start from the opposite. If some node is semi-dominator of w, yeah? So I have some node here. And this node is semi-dominator of W. So I have this path here, and all nodes here are greater than W. Then this U is semi-dominator of P, right? Well, because W is greater than P. No, oh, let's see. W is greater than P. If W is less than P, then it's not semi-dimensional. It's, not, it's not, not, not interesting. So I'll take all the ingoing edges from the vertices which are greater than P. Yeah. So all these nodes here are greater than w, w is greater than v, then all nodes on this path are greater than v. Mm -hmm. So this node is, is obviously semi-dominator of v. But that's not all. That's not all possible semi-dominators. Uh, there may be another semi-dominators. There may be semi-dominators of v, which are not semi-dominators of w. For example, here let's let's draw something like this. So we have uh, boom. Let's path. Let's have path to here, and then to here, and then to here. Something like this. Let's have this one, two, three, uh, four, and five. For example, in this situation, one is a semi-dominator of three because I have this path. I have this path. So one is a semi-dominator of V. The last edge on this path is edge from node, node five. But node one is not a semi-dominator of five. Yeah? On this path, I have node four. Four is less than five. So one is not semi-dominator of five. But one is semi-dominator of three. Mm -hmm. Why it happens? Because one is actually semi-dominator of four. So I can use this path from one to four, then use this branch from four to five, and then go here. So 
Let's look on this picture. If I have this edge from W to V, W is greater than V. Let's look on these branches. We have this, some here we have LCA. So in this branch, if I have some node uh, X, and U is semi-dominator of X, Then I have this path here. All these nodes are greater than x. x and w are both greater than v. Mm -hmm. So all these nodes are greater than v. These nodes are greater than x and x is greater than v. So I can take this path. I, I, again, I go from u to x, then here, then here. And all these paths uh, contain only nodes greater than v. These nodes are greater than v, these nodes are greater than v, and uh, here. Yeah? So if u is a semi-dominator of some node which is on this branch of the tree, then u is semi-dominator of v. Uh -huh. That's all actually. So again, let, let's take this part of the tree. So this part is from W to the lowest common ancestor of W and V. So I take all these nodes, uh, which are ancestors of V, uh, W, but not ancestors of V. So let's take the node X. X is the ancestor of V, but not ancestor of W. Of, of well, I'll let them. Not answer of V. So I take some node which is answer of W but not answer of V. And if U is answer, no, not semi dominator of X, X, then U is semi dominator of V. Hmm? Clear enough? Okay, I hope it's clear enough. Uh, now, the interesting thing that this is the only case we need to care about. If node u is a semi dominator of v and the last edge on this path is edge from this node w, then u must be a semi dominator of some x which belongs to this branch. So, the interesting fact is that you can do it like this. So there, 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 must be, there must exist at least one x such that u is semi-dominator of x. That's the interesting fact. So again, if you have u semi-dominator of v and the last edge goes from this node w, then u is a semi-dominator of some node on this branch. How to do it? Just again, let's take. The, we have some path from U to V. Visit node W. So we have this path. In this path, let's find the first node which belongs to this branch. So we have this. So we have this path from U to W, and then to U to V. Yeah. In this, in this part, let's find the first node. Which, which belongs to this branch. So X, and again, first leftmost node, which is ancestor of ancestor of uh, W and uh, let's say greater than V. So it's not an ancestor of V. So let's find the leftmost node from this branch. Now, for this branch, we have this path from U to X. Mm -hmm. I claim that in, in this area all the nodes are greater than x. Now, why is it true? Because if I have some node less than x, then by this lemma I have some ancestor of x. Mm -hmm. So if I have some node y less than x, then y, y must be a pair uh, ancestor of x. But I, I don't have any ancestors here. 
because all the ancestors are either in this branch or are less than v. And all the nodes here are greater than v. So the, all these nodes are greater than v because u is the semi denominator of v. Mm -hmm. So again, what, what I want to prove? I want to prove that if u is semi denominator of v and the last edge on this path is from w, then u must be semi denominator of some node x which belongs to this branch. How to prove this? Let's look on this path. Let's find the leftmost node which belongs to this branch. If it is the leftmost node, then all nodes to the left must be greater than x. Because if I have a node which is less than x, then I have some ancestor of x by its, this lemma. And all the ancestors of x are actually belong to, must belong to this part. Because these nodes are great, less than v. I only allow to have these ancestors. And x is the leftmost such node. So I don't have any nodes here from, from this branch. So I, don't, I can't have any ancestors of x here. So all nodes here must be greater than x. <laughs> okay, that, 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 was, that was the most tricky part of this proof. And everything now will be much easier. So, so that's the most tricky part of, this, of, of all this lecture. Now we just need to finish all this and that's all. Clear enough? Okay, finishing. How to find the semi dominator? So to find a semi dominator, we do the following. Take a minimum of all possible nodes which may be a semi dominators of V. Uh, these are nodes. Uh, first, we take all the nodes which have edges to node V. And also, we need to take minimum of all nodes in these branches. So we need to minimum of all semi dominators of X, of X. Uh, such that x belong to to this branch. Mm. Let's do it like this from LCA of V and W to W uh, for all edges from W to V like this. <laughs> Okay, so, so, something like that. So we we take the node V and look on all ingoing edges. If we have an ingoing edge from some node which is less than V, we just take this node and let's go. So if this node, if this edge going from some node which is greater than V, then we take this branch from this W to the LCA here. And in this branch, we need to find the minimum, yes, Minimum among all, all semi dominators in this branch. And this, in, in, in the end, we just calculate minimum of all these minimums, and it will be the minimal possible semi dominators. Just because we, we try to find all possible semi dominators. Yeah. We try all semi dominators in this region, all the semi dominators here, all the semi dominators just using one edge, and so on. So we, we tried all possible positions of semi dominators and find minimum of all possible dispositions. That's all. And now, finally, what we need to do here, what data structure we need to calculate this? Here, the only th interesting thing we need to calculate is this minimum. So we need to find minimal semi dominator in this branch of the tree. And again, to find semi dominator as a branch of the tree, we, need, we, we, we can use Linka trees. Why not? <laughs> it will give you log n factor for this. Thing. Uh, can we use some binary listings? Let me think. Let me think. It's 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 a little bit more tricky to use binary listings. I I I, I think it's possible, but yeah, I think it's possible. Uh, the, the, 
it's kind of a little bit more tricky because I want to calculate semi dominator using other semi dominators. Yeah. So I need these binary liftings to calculate it before I try to calculate this semi dominator. Usually, when you use binary liftings, you first calculate all binary liftings and then use you use these binary liftings to make requests, right? Here, you kind of need to do it dynamically. So when you calculate this as DOM, you want all these binary liftings to be calculated before. Mm -hmm. And you you can calculate all the binary liftings because you don't know binary liftings here. So it's a little bit more tricky. I believe it's possible to use binary liftings here, but you need to do it carefully. So you need to calculate binary liftings when you can. Yeah. So when you know all the elements in your binary liftings, you actually need to calculate the value. Something like that. Uh -huh. So I believe it's possible, but it's it's much more tricky than, than it looks like. Yes, we, you need to calculate it in correct order. Yes, so, so here, when I calculate the DOM of V, I need to this DOM of X be calculated before. But that's easy. You just calculate it from right to left. This X is already it's always greater than V. So this X is greater than V. So you just calculate it from greater values to lower values. Yeah. So just go from right to left in the order of entry time. So then you calculate this P. The X will be already calculated. That's that's fine. Yeah. There's a tricky part is if you want to use binary liftings, you want these binary liftings to calculate it dynamically. Yeah. So when you when you to calculate this value, you want these binary liftings to be calculated. Mm -hmm. It's a little bit more tricky. I, I, I believe it's doable. Yeah. You need your ancestors, you don't need your ancestors. Yeah. No, when you calculate V. You need only these nodes. You don't need this ancestor. Yeah. No, you don't need ancestors. <laughs> you only need these nodes, and all these nodes are greater than V. No, you don't need to, to know the values of your ancestors when you calculate this value. Okay, so it's doable, but, but it's uh, but it's kind of tricky. You also may use link value structure. It's kind of tricky, but it's possible. So well, well, again, what you want to do when you calculate this value, you want in your link about the structure to be all, all these nodes linked, and this edge uh, do not link. So so you want you want structure like this. So, so when you calculate this value, you want to link all these nodes, but not all these nodes. Uh, and again, it's possible. You just again you 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 link when you exit your DFS. So when when for this node V. Uh, you go from right to left, so for, for this right node, you already linked everything here, but this node is less than V, so this edge is not linked yet. So in your link valid structure, you have this path, but not this path. And you just um, eval value for this W, and it will give you minimum on this branch. So it's possible. It's, again, it's a little bit, little bit tricky, but it's possible to use link valid structure. Uh, now again, the time complexity, time complexity, time complexity here. You need to calculate this request each time you have some edge. So for each edge, you could, you make this request. So time complexity here will be analog. And again, if you use link valid structure with all these uh, heuristics we talked about in the bonus lecture last semester, uh, then you may do all these requests in inverse Ackerman time. So. So actually, if you use link eval with all these heuristics, you may achieve time complexity m inverse Ackerman function. That's that's how you can do it. Uh, it's also possible to make it linear time. So there is a much more complicated algorithm which actually solves this problem in linear time. They do some tricks, kind of like we used when we discussed Farah-Holtenbender algorithm, when we built the LCA in constant time, right? So it's something like this. So we split it into some blocks, pre-calculated blocks, something like this. And then in the end, this inverse, inverse Ackermann function is constant, so it will be linear. Uh, so it's, it's doable, but it's, it's much more tricky. Whew. Almost two hours, okay. So again, thank you for joining me. See you next week.